Hello, everybody. Good morning. How are we doing? What's up, man? Uh, so real quick, I just want to get a lay of the land. I see a lot of familiar faces, current Hawks, ex-Hawks, future Hawks. Uh, raise your hand real quick if you work for the Atlanta Hawks. Nice and, nice and proud. Yes. So uh, if you don't work for the Hawks, please raise your hand. Thanks, man. All right. Could we all agree that it's two-thirds Hawks? Is that fair? Two-thirds. So what I'll be talking about today, guys, is obviously sales culture. And I want to make it crystal clear that this is nothing about me, personally, at all. Um, people from the Hawks have come before me, come after me, come during me. It's really about the people in this room who have built the sales culture that we have. I am just simply the microphone. And to prove that I'm not the, the correct person, I'm going to make fun of myself a lot today to show you how many times I've screwed up. Uh, including maybe today doing this presentation for, my, uh, for our, our team here. Uh, so my goal is, uh, is quite simple. Um, I want to talk about the Atlanta Hawks journey, 2012 to current, and how we actually went from the highest turnover in the entire NBA to bottom five. Last three seasons, we've set back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back company records and ticketing revenue. And most important, I, and I think the, the Hawks folks in the room can attest to this, we've built a fun culture where people actually like working together, and I think that's the, uh, the most important part. Um, I'm an idealist. They categorize me a millennial, so I think I get a pass on that. I can be an idealist. My goal for today is for you to take one thing, implement it, and try to make your exact company, wherever you work, just 1% better. If we all do that, we can make this industry better, I think that's a really, really strong thing we can try today. Is that fair? Great. So, no, it's Monday morning. Some of you may have hit the, uh, the hotel bar a little hard last night. But we're going to start off with some simple math. So to do that, I would love for you guys to take out your phones, very briefly, and think about this. Per day, Monday through Friday, how many hours do you work? Per day, how many hours do you work? Take that number and divide it by 16. So Tyler, my mathematician in the back, what's your number? Let's get a different mathematician in the room. Ian, what'd you get? 0. 0.5, thanks buddy. All right, so call that 50%. So 50% of your days, Monday through Friday, hate to say, probably for the next 30 to 40 years, you're gonna be at work. Ugh, right, kicking the stomach. It's tough to hear. So what I wanna talk about today is, if we're gonna spend that much time at work, shouldn't we have a place where we welcome new people into our family and feel good about it, where you're appreciated for the hard work that you do, that you're developed both personally and professionally become the best version of yourself. So that's what I'll be talking about today is the, uh, the three things is onboarding, recognition programs, and uh, development opportunities. So again, idealists, this is the real theme of today's presentation is the industry itself has enough people who can find problems. Hey, this isn't working. Hey, boss, this isn't working. Hey, we should do this. We have enough of those. What we need people to start doing is be the people who solve those issues. And that's what I really want to push everybody on today. Um, before I really jump into the meat of the presentation, I think you guys will, will enjoy these. Uh, it's what I call our blunder years. This is when the Hawks back in 2010, 2011, 2012 made some mistakes. We probably could have done better. Uh, the first one is my mistake. Um, we did a book club at our office, and we read Napoleon Hill's Outwitting the Devil. Napoleon Hill, great author, Thick and Grow Rich, phenomenal book. Um, but this book's a little dark, uh, Outwitting the Devil. It's definitely not your, your typical business book. And we read it. It was pretty good. Two weeks afterwards, two people from, uh, from my team ended up quitting. I said, hey, Eric, you know, that book made me really think. I don't know if I want to do this anymore. Uh, so one guy quit, and he went to go work in plumbing. 
Another guy quit and he just traveled South America, so good for him. So what I learned in that experience is always pre-screen your material. It's a big, big blunder on my end. Secondly, uh, this is when I was a sales rep. So imagine you're young, you're hungry, and you're in a training. And in this training, you have to take a sales aptitude test. Essentially, it would rank you on a scale one to seven. One being that you're entry level, just getting started. And seven, you're Jordan Belfort. You're the Wolf of Wall Street, greatest salesman ever. So we all went around the horn, the manager went last. I remember a person, I scored a two, very green, didn't know what I was doing. A good friend of mine, he scored a three. One of the vets, he scored a five. And then the sales manager went. Oh yes, he did. And he was, what, what do you guys think? He was a seven. He was a badass. He was really good. And he told us how great he was and how different it was when he used to sell and, uh, and what he learned and what we wish we would have had and what he wish he would have had to do better than we have. We don't even appreciate what we have. Like, come on. Like, how demoralizing was that training? And of course, guess what? That staff had the highest turnover rate in the entire department. Uh, so those are some of our blunder years. But I think these are important to know is because at the Hawks, we believe in doing. So when we have an idea to improve culture, to improve a process, we hypothesize, we give it a test, we look at the results, and then we quickly decide, is this something we're gonna move forward with? Or are we gonna kill it? So the thing we always say is you're gonna fail, fail fast, and fail cheap. Cool? All right, so now we're gonna go into this again, onboarding, recognition, programs, leadership development. I'll race through these, hopefully have some questions at the end, and uh, any smart comments from my friends at the Hawks, please feel free to make fun of me. Uh, it is all good. Cool, so Cheerios. 2010, I graduate from Michigan State. Two days later, I drive my beautiful 1998 purple Buick Bonneville that had one door that was white for whatever reason, down 75 South, and June 7th, I started with the Hawks. I was jacked up. I was so ready. Had a $99 coal suit, pinstripe, it was hideous. First one in the office, ready to go. Meet my boss, walk down to my desk, meet my coworkers, open my desk drawer, and I find out, guys, I'm the proud new owner of 22 stale Honey Nut Cheerios. What a way to start. After that, we go into HR orientation. Sounds normal. So at HR, they told us about our benefits, our 401k, our vesting period, how deductibles work. However, that person didn't know his audience. We were eight entry-level sales reps on eight-month contracts, no overtime, small commission, and no benefits. So he was essentially saying, ha, 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 you don't have this. So not exactly the most motivating tactic either. After that, we all grabbed lunch uh, at the CNN Center on our own dime. We're sent home early, and I'll never forget in my apartment looking at myself in the mirror like, what did I get myself into? It was horrible. You know, person, I did turn down a, a Fortune 500 job in Michigan, super safe, full Benny's 401k leadership development program, and I wanted to go work for the Hawks. And I'm like, man, did I make a mistake? So fast forward. Our onboarding procedures now we take very, very seriously. Uh, so the first thing you do, this is a picture from actually a desk from uh, last June's class. So Alex, I think this is your class. Uh, where you have some Hawks swag, uh, a letter signed from our CEO, our ticket sales playbook that clearly defines everything that you need to know in terms of expectations, um, a little bit of Hawks swag and a handwritten thank you note from, uh, from your direct manager, and of course your computer set up, zero Cheerios. Two weeks of training uh, are very strenuous, very meticulous. Not only are you gonna learn every single possible conversation you can have with the client, you're also gonna learn the software. So Arctix, chat, uh, CRM for some people. And uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, the two weeks, and the Hawks fans in the, in the room know this, build up to what, guys? What's the big thing we do in onboarding? Hot seat, hot seat. So I remember my first cold call, I was trying to slang Atlanta Thrasher tickets. Not exactly the easiest sale. Uh, I was quiet, curled down, whispering in the phone, I probably got hung up on. 
wasn't good, but it was safe. No one heard me. I, could I got hung up on I could continue talking and no one would know. Uh, so we literally just flipped it on its head. And, and the, <laughs> they now know, and, and Blake, I love the smile. Uh, the hot seat is your first cold call ever, ever, after the two weeks of training, is not in the safety of your cubicle, but in a conference room, on speakerphone, in front of 30, 40, 50 peers. And a new addition we added is a flat screen TV with a big flame in the background. Uh, it is aggressive. Um, but I absolutely love it because we've all done it. It's a part of our culture. And after you finish it, people cheer, people go nuts. What'd you do well? What could you improve on? It's a beautiful thing. Also during the two weeks of training, we typically take people to dad's garage for some improv training. And then we take everybody bowling or some kind of activity to, uh, to make sure they put a stamp on it. And while I can't directly say that these onboarding procedures help and they put directly to the bottom line, I know that when we get tweets like this saying how much they are enjoying their first couple weeks, it's working. So my action item for you guys are just because you're not in sales leadership doesn't mean you can't take a new person under your wing. Right? That's not a thing. You can take somebody under your wing. You can take somebody to lunch. You can show them the ropes, and that's, a, that's a really important. So that's onboarding. Cool? Next, I want to talk about recognition programs. Um, at the Hawks, we have a lot of them. Knox, you in here, buddy? Looking good. Is he in here? No. All right, so uh, on the recognition program side, <laughs> what the hell? Uh, we have a mantra that it's okay to lose somebody if they find a better job elsewhere. It's actually okay to lose somebody if they're gonna make more money elsewhere. And it's okay to lose somebody if they wanna move to Argentina and find themselves. It's okay. However, what is not okay is to ever lose somebody because they don't feel appreciated. They don't feel recognized for the hard work, and that's me included. Everybody's included in that. That's a human being thing. Um, so at the Atlanta Hawks, what we've implemented is weekly, monthly, and annual recognition programs. My favorite is our TGIM. So for a lot of us, Monday morning, 9 a.m. is a crap time. You're tired, you're sitting in traffic, you're commuting, but what we do at the Hawks is we get everybody in the same room and have our TGIM meeting. And what we do is make people prisms of praise, as Sean Aker calls it, prism of praise. And what that means is each manager gives a shout out to someone in their department. Hey, Ben, I want to give you a shout out. You were a great teammate last week. Thanks for picking up the ball when it was dropped. Everybody claps, simple. What I think is the best part, though, is when someone like Taylor gives a shout out to someone like Ryan and say, hey, Ryan, thank you so much for helping me close that deal last week. It was really appreciated. I learned a lot from you. Thanks a lot. And we just go back and forth, right? Sometimes it takes 20 seconds. Sometimes it takes 10 minutes. But I think it's so important that we have this culture of a prism of praise that everybody is appreciating others for supporting each other. Because we're all in it together. You know, success isn't a zero sum game, especially in sales. On a monthly basis, anyone who hits their monthly sales goal, we have breakfast with, with the sales leadership team. And then we also have a monthly plaque. Matt Carrillo, the junkyard dog, he won this award at our hockeys, our annual awards presentation during our cruise to the Bahamas. Um, where we give different awards out. Some are fun and serious, like the junkyard dog, hardest worker, and some are funny, like least likely to make a phone call. Uh, we all know who that is. Uh, but it's all in fun. So my, my action item for you guys in this one, guys, is be a prism of praise. So when's the last time you made a sale from an incoming lead and you thanked marketing? You sent them a note and said, hey, I got an incoming lead, came from hawks.com, and it helped me close 10 grand. Thank you so much, I really appreciate that. Think of the world of difference that can make for that person to know that their hard work is being uh, recognized. For our friends in Ticket Ops, right? They help us so much, but when's the last time we actually went out of our way, bought them a dozen donuts and said, hey, just wanna say thanks, getting ready for the season, thank you for everything you do. Like, it's simple things, um, but here in this room, is where it needs to start. Last thing we're gonna talk about is developmental opportunities. So for this one, 
I'll talk about our pod program. So I know a lot of the Hawks folks know about this. But what our pod program is, is a 32-week program split into two different programs. Pod 1.0, 12 weeks, where we take four to eight of our uh, senior level sales reps. We assign them three to five entry level sales reps. I believe it's right now it's Tuesday mornings they do a training. Wednesday morning we review. When you're a pod leader, not only do you have to do trainings for 12 weeks with your, uh, your crew, you also are in charge of doing resume calls, out of office appointments, trainings, speaker series, and night calls. So it's a big commitment. Once you graduate from the pod program twice, you're eligible for our pod 2.0 program. And what this program is is a somewhat grueling 20-week program where week by week, we go through and build a Hawks ticket sales playbook. So when you first turn into a leader, what do you have to do first? Tyler? You have to recruit. So recruiting comes first. So what's your recruiting mechanism going to be? What's your characteristics? What's your scoring system? What's your acceptance process? What's your decline process? And we get that all written out. Once they start, what do you do? Onboard. Great. What's your first two weeks look like? What's your scripts look like? What's your software uh, training look like? It all comes in together. And by the end of the 20 weeks, the goal is that you have a very clean ticket sales playbook. That when any manager calls me throughout the industry and say, hey, Eric, I'm looking for uh, a manager, we more than likely have somebody ready. So I know it sounds good in theory, but uh, these are the results so far. So every single person on the screen right here started with the Atlanta Hawks and are now in sales leadership positions somewhere throughout the industry. Currently, nine of our 12 internal managers went through this program. We actually had two, two folks in the back right here, Travis and Chris, alumni. Thank you, guys. Chicago Cubs and Miami Marlins, Mr. Travis. Um, so we're really proud of this program. So for all of you guys, if you don't have a program like this to go through, when's the last time you asked your boss if you can make some resume calls? If you could host a training? If you could represent the company at a recruiting event? Why not ask? Why not ask? So the last thing I'll talk about today, I'll open up the Q&A and give you guys all a break. I know it's been a grueling three hours. Is we've already determined that roughly 50% five days a week for the next 30 to 40 years, you're not gonna be spent just at work doing work. More importantly, guys, you're gonna be at work with coworkers. So whether you know it or not, your coworkers go home at night, they might talk about you to their wife, to their husband, to their boyfriend, their girlfriend, their families, their friends. What do they say? Do they say that you're a person that builds people up or drags people down? that you act with integrity, or you make stuff up to steal sales? Like, what do you do? And I think it's so important that we all remember we're coworkers first. And if we can all be better coworkers, we can help everything. And with that, when next time we have a new person start, take one of your wing. And if you want a culture of integrity, act with integrity. If you want a culture where you feel appreciated, appreciate others. And if you want a culture of development, both personally and professionally, develop yourself first. Cool? That's all I got. Any questions, but thank you guys. Any questions? We got about five minutes. Is uh, Kaplan here? Was it, no, or was it Miller? Did you start talking in Spanish? That was probably it. This lady answered in Spanish, which is totally fine. And then my man just started talking right back. And I'm like, oh man, I didn't even know that was possible. Uh, Summers, you got one, buddy? <laughs> that was pretty memorable. Uh, it, what I find really interesting about the hot seat is for whatever reason, we actually have fairly high success rates. Like, we'll set some meetings in these because we're very scripted. We feel really encouraged. Um, so that was probably one of the most memorable ones. So, 
What else? Yes, yes, we've read a, we've read a ton of books. Um, so right now, I believe in Pod. You guys are reading, yeah, How to Win Friends and Influence People. We've probably bought a hundred copies of that. Uh, the Hawks folks and I also have like a, a library in my office where I check out books to people. So as you come in, you tell me what you want to learn about. I grab a book off my shelf and I give you thirty days to uh, to read it, and that happens very frequently. Um, Adam, wherever he's in. He's read about 12 books in eight months. It's pretty impressive. Uh, and then our sales leadership team, we have a book club going on throughout the summer. We've read uh, Great at Work, uh, Powerful by Patty McCord, which is a good one. And then next book is going to be Big Potential, which is the guy who wrote The Happiness Advantage. It's like a, a sequel to that called uh, Big Potential. But yeah, we're always reading. Uh, and then I know in our new seasons team, you guys read New Sales Simplified. Is that right? So, yeah, always trying to learn something. Thank you. Got a question over here? Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, other than that, like, I, always, I always find that it's good to listen to podcasts that make you think differently. So I really like uh, Malcolm Gladwell's revisionist history because he just takes an old historic topic and flips it on its head. I think that's always interesting. And anything about the Freakonomics guys is, is really good. Um, Andy Stanley's leadership podcast, I think, is, is phenomenal, too. Yeah, great question. Uh, I, I should have mentioned this earlier, so thank you for bringing it up. We've actually found that about 50% of people who go through pod tell us that it's not for them. And we think that's powerful, right? I mean, to be able to close a door on something you don't want to do, we think is a, a great opportunity. And we have people that are doing pod right now that said, hey, I don't think I want to be in leadership, but I want to pay it forward. So I had a pod leader, so I want to be a pod leader for somebody else. And I think that's just beautiful. So. Yeah, sorry. No, that's a good question. Do you guys have interns? Any seasonal staff or trainees? I'd start there. Anything else, guys? Yes. Great question. So I've always said with the Atlanta Hawks that we have a culture within a culture with sales. Um, since our new CEO, Steve Coonan, jumped on board, he's definitely been able to open it up for the entire company. Uh, we have a program called Smile. And it's essentially like a piece of paper that you can fill out the front office at the, uh, I'm sorry, the receptionist desk. You put someone's name, their uh, information, and what they did for you. You submit it. And then every month, our uh, director of culture pulls five to six, and they recognize them in a company-wide email. That program has been phenomenal. It's an awesome way to recognize somebody in another department. Um, that's a newer program. It's probably been around for a year, maybe a year and a half. Uh, but it's, it's doing great for us. And it's very simple. I mean, it's a ballot box and a, and a piece of paper. Another question back here? Hi, Natasha. Hi, Good, how are you? Good. When you say other people, you mean other teams or other departments? Um, yeah, I think it's, uh, I think Coach uh, Beechler, did I get that right? Be I'm sorry, crap, sorry. Beckler. Uh, I think Coach Beckler hit it on the head of like, you gotta get the right people in the organization first. What's beautiful about our entry level program, it's 12 months, and I can't tell you guys how many times the number one or the number, the top three salespeople 
didn't get promoted because they were a bad teammate. They, they wouldn't put people first. They would, uh, they would only look out for themselves. They would steal, cheat, and lie to get a sale. And I can think of like three off the top of my head that were number one on the board that we did not promote. That's hard to do because they were good sellers, but they weren't good for culture. And I think if you put culture first, everything else will follow. Thanks, Natasha. That was a layup. I really appreciate that. Yeah, great question. Um, we have reforecasted goals on the rep side before and on the team side. Now, from ownership down, it stays where it is. Um, but we, you know, every now and then, you got to know when you're wrong. When you set it too high, too aggressive, um, and you got to pivot. And so we, we think we are okay with that. Um, and we also know, too, we have a, a simple mantra of give me effort or give me revenue. So if you're giving us high revenue and low effort, I'm like, go ahead, go nuts, do whatever you want. I mean, Ryan Collar, uh, we all know he doesn't work eight hours a day. He might work five to six. That man sells a million dollars a year. So I'm like, bro, go enjoy your family. Uh, if you're giving me high effort and low revenue, that's my fault. We didn't coach you. We didn't train you. We didn't inspire you. That's on us. We need, to, we need to invest more in you. And if you're not giving me any effort and every revenue, then we all know you're going to have a tough conversation. It's not going to be pretty. Um, so we always say just give us a story. So I think reforecasting and making sure expectations are crystal clear. I think we have a question for one more. Yeah, never easy. Um, something that I've been subscribing to lately, and it's a little, again, idealist, uh, but self-discipline is self-love. Self-discipline is self-love. So I think instead of looking for this mirage of motivation, I think you got to start doing things that make you really uncomfortable and setting that as your discipline and the motivation will follow to, to get back after. So look for some easy wins. Uh, get your teammates to pick you up, but it's never easy, especially in June right before the 4th of July. But hey, we got Trey Young, so we're straight. We, we'll sell that, right, guys? We'll sell Trey Young. Yeah, that'll be nothing. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, last thing, I'd love for you guys to implement one thing. If you do implement something, please, please, please email. I'd love to talk about it, hear how it went. And uh, if it didn't go well, uh, that's okay too. But shoot me a note, eric.platahawks.com. But thanks, guys. Go Hawks.